All right, everyone, welcome to Central Coast Disc Golf. This is the Innova Blue Ridge Championship at North Cove. We are in beautiful Marion, North Carolina. I'm your host, Nate Perkins, joined with my good friend, Connor O'Reilly. Connor, what do you think of the North Cove Disc Golf and Leisure Club? Well, I'm as happy as Double G to be here, and if you saw that beat cam of him throwing forehand, then you know this course is going to be challenging. Amazingly beautiful place to play. The challenge matches it or subsedes or supersedes it somehow, mm -hmm. and we have this challenging par 3 to start. 381 feet, a distance that's very attackable, but left and right of the path, it's hazard. There's also a short out-of-bounds area if you don't really get out of the gap. Disc Golf Pro Tour Silver Series. Innova Blue Ridge Championship at North Cove. <laughs> this is our feature card on day one. Welcome to T Pad One. Double G, Garrett, Gersey. <laughs> See, on this one, you can choose to go up that gap, or there is this hyzer shot on the right. You really have to just clear the top of these bare trees, but couple feet and swing it back today's wind was head slightly off the right so kind of helps move this disc back back left here that looks inside though yeah this is one of the nicest settings for disc golf on the east coast honestly we are nestled in the Catawba River Valley we have the Linville Gorge off to the east and the Blue Ridge Parkway off to our west. Yeah, definitely a special place to be. Kind of gives us those Vermont vibes I know I've heard from a lot of players and I, I definitely got that myself. And this course was designed by Andrew Duvall who has had a hand in designing some holes over at Winthrop Gold. Welcome to yeah, we know Andrew one. likes to push Ricky the envelope. <laughs> hey, good to see Ricky back. Finished in eighth place at the Music City Open last weekend, shooting seven under on the final nine holes of the event. Comes up a little short with his felon right there. And Calvin is leading every category off the tee, Connor. Yeah, he's had an amazing season. If you haven't been keeping up as close yet, he's finished on the podium. He has the longest current podium streak. Yep, he just tied Macbeth. Five, five in a row. I think longest streak since 2019. He sneaks it in bounds right there. Spikes just inside the circle. He's, he is going to have that big boulder to deal with, though. So maybe we'll see a. Is there a chance? The basketball putt. Is there a chance the we see a basketball putt, Connor? And kind of a uncomfortable distance for germ and he caches it oh it looked like he didn't know whether he went in or not maybe bounced off the rock a little bit hard to tell yeah rick having to go to the horseshoe putt almost just to get an angle and there's a couple greens out here where you can be inside the circle with just no chance or very low chance i should say because there's always a chance right kelvin Kobe. Oh, oh. <laughs> almost off the nub. No the way. Run. Yeah, there's a couple very bouldery greens out here. And I don't know. I feel like you almost have to have like a use your second putter on, on some of these greens just to not chip your first one up. And this is probably one of the most technical courses that we're gonna see all year on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. This is a Silver Series event, counting for 50% of the points. 
Yeah, typically on the Disc Golf Pro Tour, we see the birdie race alive. Par has never felt better than on a course like this, and Jerem sneaks it over the rock by an inch. Wow, I was hovering that over that boulder. <laughs> All right, hole two, you are right on the bank of the Catawba River. It's a par three, 390 feet. There's a mando right off the tee that prevents you from going pure hyzer. You kind of have to shape one around these young trees and use the stability of your disc. And OB only 35 feet long and 12 feet right of this pin. Yeah, this one's a very specific, you gotta kinda turn it, but keep the nose angle up, otherwise you'll find that it'll be long very quickly, so. Very uh, skillful shot here. Germ not quite getting enough turn on that Thunderbird, and that is a, mm -hmm. that's a big mistake right there, Connor. I believe that tree is out of bounds. I, I, I believe he might have to re-tee. Yeah, if you don't miss long right here, your miss is short, it's kind of a nightmare, you're pretty much like Nate said, re-teeing and Garrett, ooh, good ground action to stay in there. Would have been unfortunate to see that slide over the ridge. And I believe that's a firebird from Garrett. We're going to be seeing quite a bit of that from him. And Calvin going Draco. Ripping this one over on Annie. A lot safer of a line. And oh my gosh, off the flag stick, you guys. Ugh. I think that flag might have saved him, honestly. Absolutely saved him. Ricky going raptor eye felon. Yeah, that looks masterfully thrown. Beautiful shape right there. It's exactly what they were looking for, and Germ is going to retee. He was actually unaware that his disc never crossed and bounced. His card mates had to let him know that that tree is actually just short of the line. Yeah, this hole looks pretty straightforward, but that out of bounds is so tight. And that miss low is pretty daunting, so it's easy to see players blast it out the back. Like we said, Calvin ringing up the flagpole, getting kind of fortunate, staying in. This is one of those courses where it feels like to score birdies, you have to throw a shot that's like within 95 percentile of like the nice exact birdie, shot you wanted. Otherwise, the punishment comes quick. Oh, we're going to see the the tiniest greens. I mean, there's there's five greens out here that are smaller than circle one. No, oh, there's, uh, yeah, at least five that are like just outside of bullseye range. And <laughs> at least half of them where circle one is significantly impacted. Getting a good look at that little shuffle and pump that Calvin is making a career out of. One of the best. Oh, that flag definitely saved yeah. him, Connor. Yeah, he would have ramped off the top of that one into the river. Good thing is it feels nice and chill in there, so a little ice bath. And uh, here we are in hole three. Very interesting par four. This first shot plays on kind of a peninsula of inbounds area. You're looking to avoid being in this little ditch if you can, just to have good footing. And then second shot, you're playing across more out of bounds. And I think this is the first time we've seen a sand trap used as the inbounds area on a disc golf course with the surrounding area being out of bounds. And this one, barely bigger than the bullseye as you get close, but there is kind of a fatter area of the green to the left to bail out to. Garrett's actually attacking this hole. What? I didn't even fathom this play, you guys, and I don't think almost anybody did, but honestly, oh my gosh. Oh, just 15 feet short of the sand. And honestly, that's a, that's a pretty smart play from him just in terms of the way these drop zones kind of equally punish you regardless of whether you go out super early or you go out late, you kind of get to go up and still probably save a par. And Garrett trying to take advantage of that. Calvin masterfully lays down that mid-range. And 
into the ditch. It's like 300 feet from the T to the end of that ditch. And, and right past that ditch, it's only about 250 feet to the pin. And Jerem really just getting over on that forehand. And that's kind of a unforced error right there. Yeah, he was probably trying to beat the ditch like you're talking about. And it, it makes it the shot a lot harder. I think it could be, if you're a good enough forehand player, I think accepting that being in the ditch is, can be okay. Because then you can throw another standstill forehand the way Rick did and put it in close. That was well done. A little bit of tailwind left to right here on this shot. Calvin going Toro. Yeah, you could see he put a quite a bit of angle on it. He wanted to make sure to prioritize getting inbounds versus being in that small pocket near the basket. Well, is this whole hazard around the sand, or is it it's o OB? Yeah, it's all out of bounds. There's drop zone. And shots off the tee that go out of bounds go to DZ1, where you see Garrett and Germ throwing from here. And then any sh subsequent shots that were in the fairway advance to a drop zone that's about 80 feet from the basket over there by the sand trap. Germ putting that ABR X3 in the bullseye. And I guess the risk reward is there for Garrett. I mean, if the, dro the drop zone is only a 240 foot shot. 100%. Yeah, there's one of those courses or there's a couple holes where with these two different drop zones where if you play aggressive off the tee, your your worst case scenario is kind of like a double bogey, but then if you do end up getting up there and giving yourself a two or a three, you're definitely grabbing a lot of strokes. So calculated risk from double G. There are some holes out here though that you do not want to mess with. Whacking the sand off his disc. And yeah, if you have that forehand, it really comes in the handy throwing out of this ditch. Otherwise, the backhand footwork is just so tricky. And Rick said that the wrist is not really bothering him. That's good to hear. We're, we're all thankful to have him back in form. This looks perfect. Off the basket. Now it's rolling. It's headed for the OB. This needs to sit. Oh my goodness, it's safe. Right on the line. She's gonna have about a 30 foot putt for the win. Okay, here we go. The putt is up. Boom, it's in. Strong side with authority. What an incredible moment. Yes. Yeah, if you want to keep it in the fairway on a wooded course, throw a Wombat 3. All right, hole four faces back north. We are headed up into the woods here. Slight draw from left to right. Only 300 feet, but this hole does ascend 12 feet from T to green. Shapes up a little better for the backhand turnover than it does the forehand, but you don't want to overturn this one as you will kind of dig into that hill and roll backwards and beautiful shot from Ricky. He kind of went fast, faster on that one. He threw fairway. Yeah, I feel like this is this is that range that it feels like mid range is right there. But I don't know, twelve feet uphill. It seems like it plays a little, little more, and it, it seems like it's playing kind of in that three thirty to forty range. And with that boulder being short, also I think most players are happy being long of this one, having an open putting lane. And that's kind of what what happens if you overturn this shot. Yeah, we see even Calvin reaching on that seasoned eagle of his. Probably one of those holes a lot of players stepped up initially thought mid-range, but after throwing it a little bit, realized, okay, try to pump it long. Just another one slightly overturned. We 
No Jeremy Colling's really good with the straight forehands. Let's see if he can pin this one down there. Ooh. A little rejection from the hillside. There's a lot of out of bounds out here, you guys, and there are some steep slopes. We see some of the most brutal rollaways that you'll see out here. And uh, this hole can definitely give them out. Jerm kind of taking a second look at that one. Pretty big miss there. Leaves himself a tester. Calvin's living on that flagpole so far. Ooh, a little sonic toss. Oh, front cages it. Double G. Great creativity. Connor, the first time I met Double G, he put a sonic in my lap from 350 feet away <laughs> across the field at Beaver State Fling. Most people know Garrett for his big power, but he has equally as much touch and oh, oh big germ just no a bit way. out of sorts here. Unfortunate bogey on the easiest hole of the track. Germ's gonna be kicking himself after that one. Hopefully he can dial it in. This one played at point two under par, and with that being the easiest on the course, that just shows you how hard this track's playing. Little turkey for Rick. The Raptor is running. And yeah, this first stretch of the course feels a little more scorable than that late stretch, so you really want to come out swinging here. And hole five is a very unique par five, par four, I should say. Out of bounds surrounding both sides, and you have to land on this ridge. Got to make sure to come in with the proper angle so you don't skip too far or roll either way. And you kind of pick your poison how much distance you want to grab off the tee. Coming into the green, you'll probably have kind of a low ceiling hyzer or the straight shot here if you push it far enough. Steep slope to the right of the basket to avoid, so most players will be coming in with that right to left moving shot into the green. You can almost reach out and touch this first tree that's in front of the tee. And Ricky flattens that one out, and he's going to be out of bounds, taking it way back. You really only need, you know, 300 to, to 350 off this tee. Just need to crest that first hill. Yeah, you really just gotta hit a very specific height window on an overstable disc flat, I feel like here, and then kind of let the disc do the work. You wanna be flat, but I guess just that, that tinge of hyzer is gonna help keep you from pushing too straight and finding the spot that Ricky did. Oh, Garrett went Firebird, and that was a Quasar from Calvin, and this is Germ's Halo boss. Wow, this is very aggressive, and hopefully he can check up on that steep hill. Yeah, just big Germ just finding out the way, all the ways that this course can really challenge you. The out of bounds will come fast, and you know you can sometimes you can have one of those days you're throwing pretty good shots, but you're just finding yourself barely out of bounds and. This course will drain you. Yeah, the mistakes are kind of adding up for Germ. Ricky's about 470 out here. Carrying OB almost the entire way. Yeah, pretty long and scary bid there, but I don't know if I've seen Ricky lay up very often, so let's see. Let's see what he's feeling here. Yeah, you can just see Germ's body language. He's kind of a little pressed already, and hopefully he can find a birdie here fast because feeling some type of way on this course just it can make it just extra challenging. Oh, and he's landing a forehand turnover with this AVR X3. This is a technical shot. Does it have enough turn? Oh, 
Oh. Big Jerm just ditching the backhand out here or what? Oh. Green. Yeah, there's a there's double quite checking a bit of, oh. to red. No. This is getting out of hand. I wonder why he went backhand or forehand turnover there. I mean, he's got a great backhand as well. And double G, will he find the same fate? Oh, he gets the fortune of the draw. Calvin, after a pretty big drive, has less than 250 into the green. It's kind of... Yeah, it's kind of the range. I, ideal. I like, I like to play that driver off the tee just so you can come in with a slower disc, ideally. Looks like he went with the Toro there. And that's a tough ask for Ricky. Even then, he tries to give it a look. Ricky is fearless, you guys. It's going to be another tough pill to swallow for a big germ. And you can see that white string just six inches behind Garrett's disc. There was really nothing in the way to stop him from just rolling out. Oh. Yeah, maybe he just caught some of that rock play that slowed his disc down enough. And man, this isn't really one of those sides of the green that you expect to roll on, but North Cove has teeth and it has a variety of them. Oh, oh no. Oh, man. Oh, and Back fortunately it checks up, but... Uh, yeah, it's a pretty flat green to to roll out to 30. All right. Unfortunate three putt there for double G. Yeah, his first bogey of the round, probably not the hole that he was expecting to take it on after landing in bounds on the drive. This definitely feels like one of the more tame holes out here. And Ricky's here to score today. I don't think we'll see much gray on his card. And just like that, Germ finds himself four over par. You know, as simple as this hole seems, it, it played .32 over par today. So those out-of-bound strokes come quick, both on the tee shot and coming into the green especially if you hang it out to the right. Those curls are kind of dropping down in his vision. Yeah, Calvin's getting to the point. He's going to have to make a decision. Is he, is he chopping the fro all the way down, or how's he doing it? Nice looking rip on that Quasar right there. Right, hole six, the first of a few mound holes out here. This one only 272, but just so hard to get this disc to stop moving. Ideal shot is a flat backhand that hits the front side of this hill to slow it down, or a forehand spike hyzer around these trees on the left side. Calvin going Toro. Ooh, checks the hill nicely. If he crests that at all, you guys, he's finding that out of bounds long, even even though he threw the right disc. This one is so particular, like Nate said. Will we see Jerem go with the forehand route? Let's see. Rick playing up the middle, drawing over an overstable disc, and he just threw that one literally as good as you can. Other than going in the basket, I guess, but honestly, that's a miss, because if you miss the basket, you're out of bounds, guaranteed. And Garrett going down tempo on this rock right here. Oh. Oh, and just misses the hill. And that's just as you said, Connor, if you don't hit that hill, it finds OB quick. And Jerm going to play that spike forehand. This is his halo boss again. Reaching real high on this one. Looks like he has the movement and that soft ground makes him not have to worry about another roll away. 
And yeah, this drop zone is almost unrunnable. You pretty much just have to lay up. But the layup's kind of tricky because this slope gets super steep. You, so you really almost can't lay up into the bullseye without fears of that roll away happening. Drop zone for any OB, huh? Yeah, any OB off the tee goes to drop zone. After that, I believe you play from the last place to inbounds. Oh, and Jerm getting a little timid on that putt uphill into a gentle headwind. And Calvin sticks it. Yeah, Calvin's probably in the best place to be there. If you can barely crest the hill and somehow check up inbounds long, you can kind of putt back at the slope. Yeah, this one's, I mean, camera never does it justice. We got to say it every time, but this slope is its really real on this one. It's at least probably 40%, and it, as soon as you hit that cage, you're, you're kind of praying that you don't roll away. Out of bounds, maybe just circle's edge down there. Oh. Oh. Ho, ho. It's even more of a quality catch than I thought. Those end of a basket showing love to their top dog. Here's a look at that leaderboard. A lot of pretty looking scores, but I'm sure we will see some flipping up as we continue on. Hole seven. This one's one of the more straightforward holes out here. Only really this hazard bunker to deal with right in front of the tee that honestly, if you find, I'm sorry, because I don't know how you found it, but coming into this gap, you want the disc to just be gently moving to the right. Not hard, not, not, too, not too soft, but just a little movement to the right. If you can beat these boulders, you're very happy. If not, you have some kind of scramble shot to try to get up to this rocky green. This one definitely gives those East Coast wooded course vibes, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a good birdie to pick up if you can throw your drive where you want. Yeah, the ideal landing zone starts right around 320 feet and kind of extends out to 360, and it's kind of like trying to land your disc on a on a trail in the woods. I mean, it is a skinny fairway, and yeah, that's a very very good description there. It is Ooh. truly like a walking path in terms of the right side of the boulders there that you want to find. Man. Rick gets a nice shape on that one, hits the boulders, and he's going to be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, he should have that standstill lead out forehand from there. Germ takes a flare skip down towards the little creek there. It does play casual, and we have been told that we get relief back from any boulders so if you don't want to play on top of a boulder you can take relief directly back and heading into this round these players were kind of preparing for you know the worst weather uh, we had thunderstorms on the radar and then it turned out to be a pretty pleasant afternoon down here in the valley yeah, also like Vermont, this place is hard to read weather-wise because, you know, we have a couple weather forecasts you can take on the on the weather app, but they're both from towns that are like 20, 20 minutes away. You know, we're up here in the mountains where sometimes stuff just gets diverted and, you know, he could be preparing for the worst. But like Nate said, luckily today it held off until hole 18 pretty much. So that was quite the blessing. I can't imagine playing this course in the wet as well. Garrett and Calvin getting creative there from the short side of the boulders, and this is pretty much the ideal landing zone. Uh, Ricky kind of hangs onto that forehand. Wow, that was a great pop out of the hand from Big Germ not being able to use much legs. Can't lie, this this second half of this hole gives me big Iron Hill vibes. So, oh, it really does. And that is just the last nub for Garrett and Calvin with somewhat of a death putt. Puts it high and on the pole. He's four under. Clean car, and that's all that's of a sudden be really hard to do out here. Little turkey. It'd almost be very surprising to see any player get through the round without a bogey. Calvin staving him off so far.
Double G, keeping it calm, keeping it cool out here. And you're going to need that because this course will test you and it'll break your mind sometimes. Not if you deliver them high, deliver them flat. Four, five, eighty-four. You're kind of limited with how much distance you can bite off the tee here. There is some OB that creeps in on the right side, marked by those rocks and a white line in the grass, and then there is an OB line in the woods. You can only throw about 350 off the tee, and then you can either go big hyzer around the trees or, or kind of flip something up through this gap. Yeah, off this tee, you can kind of decide, do I take this wide gap, take it really easy, or do I go with this inside gap that it looks like Calvin's lining up to try to move the disc more right and open up the approach angle? Yeah, the, the further right you are, the, the more options you have. From, from where Calvin's at, it ascends another 20 feet from, from fairway to green. Ricky pushing this one a little bit further but able to get enough right movement, he should have a very manageable approach. And he probably has only about 260 feet of distance to go. Have we seen a backhand out of Big Germ yet? Oh, hole two, hole two, yeah. You have to throw it there. Garrett feathers that rock shot up there, hanging out, I believe. So this is about 350 into the green, 20 feet uphill. Oh, that was scary inside. Belated. But he beats the corner and he is parked. Yeah, this is, this is another hole where Scrambling is just not really an option. There, there's an OB line, just maybe 20 feet into the woods there. Yeah, it looks like Garrett might have found it, might have got fortunate and just stayed in bounds. Let's let's find out. Germ overturns that, and he no, finds that. Oh, he out finds of it. Man, it is just compounding for him right now. Look, yeah. he is deflated. Ricky just going Harper Slammer on the force over forehand. And honestly, that shapes really well for the way this green slopes. And it was just five months ago, almost to the day that Germ was, he tied the knot here. I, I was at the wedding in, in November and it means a lot to him to return to North Cove, and I know that he had some high expectations coming into the event, and it is just not going his way thus far. Yeah, and everyone here looking to get that Silver Series action, and they know the win can come to anybody on a course this challenging, but... As soon as you let your mind kind of slip off that slope, it can be a very hard battle out here. And that's four in a row for Calvin. Matching the best pace that we've seen. Yeah, tough, tough bogey for Jeremy. Probably one of the easier par fours, more straightforward out here. You really just got to beat that out of bounds line on your second shot. And there's a lot of room off to the right to hang it. So hopefully he can make the adjustment coming into tomorrow. And hole nine, finishing out the front nine with a bomber par three out of bounds on this cart path and right, as well as here on the wood line, the entire way to the left also wraps around the backside. This one is 496 feet, plays gently uphill we had a little bit of headwind kind of flashing its its face today. 
you really need to move the disc from the left to the right to be able to get to this one. If you don't get that turn and a little bit of fade back, it's really hard. It's easy to find that out of bounds left or to overturn it here. Definitely that distance that's really kind of pushing the ability of the players. Yeah, this one asks a lot. 500 feet and there is, n again, no opportunity to scramble. Right at 50 feet, that OB kind of tapers off left. But if Calvin Heiser's out any earlier, it's an instant bogey. Even then, I th he has to be like on the line almost because, yeah, the way his his line was looking, it looked scary. And Rick, though, <laughs> driving that one. One of the rare circle wow. one looks here. That's as good as it gets, really. Absolutely. And Garrett's going to look to follow that shot. Destroyer here. Yeah, we know Double G separates himself on holes like this, and this one is coming in cruising. Well, and he matches that shot, Connor, with, without as much turn, just kind of a flat line that gets there. And he's just throwing just a few miles per hour faster than Ricky. Jerem puts a nice move on this one. Can he get it to fade out? No. Man, it has been tough going. That was a great looking line for Jeremy. Just a little too much turn and very quickly pitches up. Got to be careful out here. Oh, he's almost had a mistake on every hole since the first. He's going to be six over on this front. And Calvin putting for a six down. Dang, I wonder if Calvin caught some of those trees over there to stay in bounds. He really pushed that one long. That was... Impressive power. Ricky making that one look easy, and that means double G is even closer. Yeah, those are two of the closest drives that you're going to see on, on the ninth, and gets Garrett back to even, and Ricky with six birdies on the front nine, Connor. That's pretty intense. This course is hard to score on. And yeah, Ricky's here to here to press. Hole nine actually played as the second most difficult hole on the course, so to see two birdies on it, most definitely rare. We only saw six on the day. Shout out to Mox, Fish, Matty O, and Ben Calloway for grabbing the other four. And, and the gorge is just such an interesting course. It's unlike any that we're going to see on the tour, and. You know, for, for some players, they, they felt like the OB was a little too tight, but, you know, for me as a fan and a spectator, I feel like it's it's pretty exciting golf to watch and Central Coast capturing the action for you guys. Yeah, this course most definitely is going to test the physical abilities, but especially the mental abilities of the players. You got to throw crisp to score. And Taking a look it. at this leaderboard, Harper Thompson and Calvin Heinberg, oh, as well as Andrew Fish shooting a five down on the front. And thank you guys so much for joining us. And Nate Perkins and Connor O'Reilly, and don't go anywhere. The gorge gets that much more technical on this back nine, doesn't it, Connor? Oh, yeah.